الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي لحبت في الله The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Man sanna fil islam sunnatin hasana Falahu ajraha wa ajra man amala biha Wa man sanna sunnata sayya Fa alayhi wuzraha Wa wuzra man amala biha Ruahu muslim Ahabati fillah The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Said whoever revives in Islam a righteous sunnah then for him is that reward and the reward of those people who follow him and whoever brings about a wicked way then for him is that sin and the sin of those people who follow him so those people who call you to misguidance and deviance, who call you to extremism, they will not answer for you if you answer their call before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's up to you and I to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as we can. And it's up to you and I to seek knowledge and follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which we can only follow through knowledge, through ilm and nafiyah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمِسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمٍ سَحَلَّ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever traverses the path of knowledge and knowledge, Allah will make easier for him the path to paradise. The path to paradise, ayyu al-habitu fillah, is not remaining in a state of ignorance, having zeal, religious zeal, and going to run off to faraway lands to fight in struggles you know nothing about, that you only know about through your YouTube interactions. And advancing Islam does not come by supporting groups and sects which call to extremism which call to killing people, which calling to bomb, calls to bomb, bombing people, groups that kill more Muslims than anyone else and claim to be advancing Islam, groups and individuals who cut the heads off of people with knives, claiming that this is advancing Islam or this is retribution for something. But only people like this are people of extremism and ignorance. And those people who will follow them and join them and risk their wealth and their lives and their property have put their wealth, their lives, and their property in the wrong places and have directed their energy in the wrong manner. So I advise myself and I advise the youth of Islam to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and do not follow the shubahat, the doubts of those people. If you want to advance Islam, then make sure you're praying. Make sure you're fasting. Make sure you're doing those things which are an obligation, which the ulama of Islam from the beginning of Islam up until now have no disagreement that those are obligations upon you. But how is it people who don't even practice think that they're going to erase all their deeds by running off in faraway lands and joining groups that they know nothing about that are only known for brutality, even from their own tongues, and are known for following the madhab of the khawarij, make it take fear of the ulama, and make it take fear of all the Muslim leaders as if there's no Muslim leader parent, this is the madhab of Sayyid Qutb. And this is a dangerous, wicked ideology. And it's up to the communities, those masajid, they need to be talking about this in the West. They need to quit their cowardice. Quit hiding under their banner of, of, of just we're immigrants in a new country 
We're happy, but we don't even speak about this extremism. And we allow our youth to go and join this evil and contribute to evil. Those same youth will be the same ones who turn on you. Will be the same ones who come back and kill and attack you. Will be the same ones who make it hard for you to practice your Islam in Muslim and non-Muslim lands because of their wicked misguidance. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Assembly wa ta said, Isma wa atir. Wa in Abdul Habashiyan, or kama qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَّرَا اِخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا This is the shahid. The Prophet Wasallam said, Verily those people who live after me will see many differences. Don't we see many differences? How many groups do we have that they claim to be on the haq? This one is claiming Khalifa. This one is in Nigeria doing all the, the wickedness and, and no one from the Ummah supports this except for madmen. This one here in Somalia is just blowing up people in malls, killing people in malls, claiming it's a life for a life. And affecting the youth around the world so much so that they go and they kill people, claiming that they're just kills in the, in the non-Muslim lands, and even in the Muslim lands. Then we have those in Afghanistan and Pakistan blowing up everyone in the, in, in the sulk, everyone in the masjid. You can't feel safety anywhere. The same as in Yemen, we have Al-Qaeda, we have all these other extremists. And you will see many differences. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَعَلَيْكَ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةُ خُلَفَاءَ رَاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ عَدُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَادِجْ وَإِيَّاكَ مُمْحْتَتَرَ الْمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالًا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, giving us a prescription for all this, this madness, these things that are pulling you in different directions. You want to help Islam. But you can't help it by blowing yourself up. That doesn't help any Muslim. No Muslim is advanced by that. And nor are you. He said, فَعَلَيْكَ بِسُنَّةِ It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat. Meaning Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali. Not Abu Bakr Baghdadi. فَعَلَيْكَ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءَ رَاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ أَدُوا عَلَيْهَا بِنَّ وَاجِزُ Bite it. Hold on to it with your molar teeth. So this is what Salafis do. This is what Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a do. There's no such thing as Salafi Jihadi. There's no such thing as Salafi Terrorist. There's no such thing as Salafi Jama'at Kada wa Kada. Salafis follow Kitab Allah wa Sunnat Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. It doesn't matter what Yasser Qadi claims. It doesn't matter what the Orientalists claim. It doesn't matter what all these other false ideologues claim and these people of Batal and Bidah, what they claim about Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah wants maslaha for mankind, wants the rectification of mankind by spreading Islam. By Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. And our madhab is by ilm, is by knowledge, by teaching, grounding the people. And this will change the hearts of the people, increasing their belief. And it will, we should be an example for non-Muslims, for them to rush to Islam. Who's rushing to Islam to people getting their heads cut off with a butter knife? Who's rushing to Islam when people are going to malls and killing women and children? Who's rushing to Islam with this? What kind of dawah to Islam is this? So Ahabatifillah, go back to the ulama of Islam, listen to the fatawa of the major scholars, imams like Imam Fozan, the Mufti of Saudi Arabia, and many others. Wulo Qari al Kafirun, even if the disbelievers hate it. Wulo Qari al Ahl Zandaka, even if the Zanadik, Zanadika hate it, and the heretics. Even if the Khawarij, even if the Takfiris, even if those people who claim that they're fighting jihad, but they do it only through evil and wicked and spreading facade fil art, 
وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ Those are the ones Those are the ones who are misguided Those are the characteristics of the hypocrites If you want to know the truth أَحْبَتِكِ اللَّهِ And I'll end by this fatwa because it's so relevant and we hear the same arguments, the same questions and the same stuff from the people. May Allah open the people's ears and I guess we should never tire in speaking about the haq to the best of our ability. Sheikh Imam Fozan said, it is an obligation after being asked, during this time it's become common to curse and slander the major scholars and accusations of wickedness and disbelief, especially after fatwa against bombings. They say our scholars are weak in love and hating for Allah. Therefore, we ask for your advice for those who are involved in this issue. And what is the ruling of refuting the one who speaks like this? Sheikh Fozan said, it is an obligation on the one who is ignorant not to speak and keep silent, and fear Allah, and not to speak without knowledge. Verily, my Lord has prohibited wickedness, open and hidden sinfulness and oppression without the right to do so. Also associating, a part, associating partners with Allah without authority to do so and to speak about Allah without knowledge. Surah Al-A'raf, Ayat 33. Therefore, it is not permissible for one who is ignorant to speak about an issue, especially a major issue, like takfir, jihad, loving and hating for Allah. As for backbiting and slandering the honor of the leader and the ulama, then this is the worst type of backbiting. This is not permissible. As for the past and present times, and these are the concerns, affairs of the authorities and scholars, they research these issues and counsel regarding them. It is the job of the scholars to clarify the Sharia rulings. As for the general people and beginning students, then this is not their job or concern. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when some news of security or harm or alarm comes their way, they broadcast it. But had they referred it to the messenger and to those in authority amongst them, those who can draw conclusions from it would have comprehended it. Were it not for Allah's blessing and mercy upon you, you would have followed the devil except for a few. Surah Al-Nisa, Ayat 83. It's an obligation to restrain one's tongue regarding those issues, especially relating to takfir, loving and hating for Allah's sake, because people are mostly ignorant in applying to these things and may err in their application, judging someone to be misguided or uh, a disbeliever, and the ruling may apply to himself. And I seek uh, refuge in Allah from that. He should refrain his tongue unless he is not those who have been entrusted with his fair, the leader of the scholars. This is a necessity to research this issue fulfill the res and fulfill the responsibility. As for the general people and small students, and he has no right to make judgment about a person and defame his honor, and he is ignorant, backbiting, making takfir and tafsik and other rulings, this harms the one who does this. A Muslim must restrain his tongue and not speak about what, he does, what does not concern him. He should supplicate for the Muslims to be aided and against disbelievers to receive punishment. This is from your right, and you should not involve yourself in making Sharia rulings, making errors, speaking about the, the leaders and ulama, judging them with disbelief or misguidance. This is incredibly dangerous. O oh, you who speak, as for those scholars and leaders, your speech does not harm them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil, and anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. May Allah guide the youth of Muslimin. May Allah guide the Muslims everywhere. May Allah preserve the honor and the lives and the wealth of the Muslims everywhere. May Allah guide the non-Muslims to Islam and to the peace and sanctity and security of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Return those wicked extremist takfiris and others back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and give them guidance. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala protect us from the evil and the wicked of the wrath of the Shia who are harming the Muslims everywhere in Yemen and in Iraq and in Syria and wherever they may be in their Hizbah Bath cohorts and all the evil wicked shayateen who want to harm even one Muslim. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Ali wa Sahbi wa Sallam.